Hi everyone, my name is Shelby and you're watching Read and Find Out. So today I decided I wanted to do my second ever original tag video after I did the Wizarding World About Me tag like eight, nine months ago or something like that. And this is going to be the Cosmere book tag. From what I've seen on booktube, this doesn't appear to exist already, so I decided I would make it myself. And obviously, this is inspired by Brandon Sanderson's Cosmere universe and also by the individual works in the Cosmere. If you don't know very much about the Cosmere or its mythology and kind of the lore around it, I'm gonna be doing videos sometime soon explaining bits of that, so anything that I mentioned that you don't understand in this video, check out future videos. But I'm just gonna go ahead and get into the questions that I've come up with, and I'm really excited because I could not believe that this hadn't been done already. So the first question is Elantris, a book or series where the magic fails its people. So the first thing that I thought of was The Tangled Land, and this is like an anthology sort of. It's four different short stories all set in the same world but following different characters and at different time periods in Came, the Blue City. And the Blue City is ravaged by these vines that are kind of taking over when magic is used. So magic use is being policed, but there are people in power who are still using the magic. Yeah. So I think that is a pretty clear case of the magic not working for its people. Whereas in Elantris, the Aeons aren't working anymore, and Elantris, the city, has fallen. In the Tangled Lands, it's the magic itself that's like crippling them. And though this doesn't exactly fit, I decided I would also throw in the Broken Earth trilogy. Not that the magic is failing its people, because it works for the Origines, but the Origines have been oppressed because of their magic use. And also with their magic use, Father Earth hates them. Magic has failed its users, in a sense, because the Origines are hated. Though really, that's not the fault of the magic, it's the fault of the people, but... I just wanted to throw that out there. Question number two is Mistborn. Your favorite ragtag gang. This is obviously inspired by Kelsier's crew that he gets together in the first book of the Mistborn trilogy. You can use examples from the Cosmere in this, though I'm gonna try to come up with examples that are non-Cosmere as well, but Bridge 4 is really my favorite ragtag gang because they- <laughs> I just love their bond. Like, their bond is an entire group is fantastic. Obviously Bridge 4 from the Stormlight Archive, but I'm trying to use non-Cosmere work mostly. So I'm also gonna say the group in Nevermore, The Trials of Morrigan Crow by Jessica Townsend, with Morrigan and Jupiter and Finestra, and the group that stays there at the Hotel Deucalion, I think it's what it's called, that group. I'm gonna count them. I love them. Question three is Warbreaker, an interesting family dynamic. And obviously this question is inspired by Siri and Vivena, or Vivena, I don't know how you say her name exactly, I only recently read this. The princesses, who are some of the main characters in this story. Princess sisters, who are in some interesting and kind of compromising roles. Definitely my favorite family dynamic, the most interesting family dynamic that I think I've read, particularly in SFF in a long time, has been the entire Vestrit family from the Live Ship Traders trilogy. Multiple different mother-daughter relationships, sister relationships, sibling relationships, father-son, father-daughter, like lots of interesting stuff going on in the Vestrits and by extension the Havens. This is Robin Hobb's second trilogy in her Realm of the Elderlings. I recommend reading Farseer first, but you can technically pick up on Live Ship. And the family in this is just really, really cool. But I also want to give a shout out to Binti by Nadia Korafor because I am very interested in the family dynamics and kind of the tribe dynamics as well. Question 4 is Stormlight Archive. The biggest book you've read and the biggest book on your TBR. The biggest books that I've read have definitely been the 1200 plus page Stormlight Archive books, but also the entirety of the Protestant Bible, like all 66 or whatever books of it. I've read all of that and it's kind of contained in one book. So, I'll count that. And the biggest book on my own TBR at the moment is Anna Karenina, which is over 900 pages long. Also, my great aunt had or found this old edition and gave it to me, so thank you, Aunt Loretta, because this is really cool. Question five is Alloy Era, a series continuation or prequel or sequel that you didn't like as much as the original. And yes, I know that this is my opinion, that I did not like 
the Alloy Era Mistborn books as much as the original trilogy, but I made the questions. You can state here if you liked them as much or if you liked them more, that's fine, go for it. I think the main answer that came to mind for me for this one, other than just like a sequel, something that's like a spin-off, was Harry Potter and the Cursed Child because I hate this piece of crap. I don't hate all of it, there are a few redeeming qualities that it has, like Scorpius Malfoy, but that's about it. I did not hate the Alloy Era books, by the way, I like them, just not as much as the regular Miss. Question 6 is White Sand an underdog you root for. And this could be a protagonist like Kenton, or it could be, you know, a side character, it doesn't matter, but I'm gonna go for protagonists. And obviously, Kenton, I'm considering an underdog because of his very specific use of sand mastery, where he has like the one strand that he can do at a time, and that kind of sets him apart, but people typically look down on him for it. This is another one where I have two answers. The first one is non-SFF, and that's Britt Marie from Britt Marie Was Here. And I consider her an underdog in a lot of ways because she hasn't lived the majority of her life in a way that she really wants. Her life has been very simple and not very happy for the most part, and she's in her 60s now. And she kind of goes through a personal revolution almost, I think, in this book. But then on the SFF side, I'll say Laszlo Strange from Strange the Dreamer. Sorry if the glare on this book is insane. Because Laszlo is an orphan obsessed with this city of weep that most people think just like doesn't even exist, and he's kind of looked down on for that. And I really liked Laszlo, minus like the last 50 pages of this question. Seven is going to be Arcanum Unbounded. Favorite anthology, anthology being a collection of short stories. And then if you don't have a favorite anthology, what is your favorite short story or piece of short work? Arcanum Unbounded is one of my favorite anthologies just because it's all Cosmere short stories. <sighs> My favorites in Arcanum Unbounded are The Emperor's Soul and Edge Dancer. But ultimately, I would say that my favorite anthology is The Paper Menagerie and Other Stories by Kin Lu. I think this might be the first anthology that I ever read, actually, unless I read one for school, but I'm not going to count that. <laughs> and this is all science fiction or fantasy. I think there's probably more science fiction than fantasy in this specific anthology, but it was so good. There were multiple short stories that made me cry in this. They're written in a beautiful way. His writing style, I would say, is almost literary, even though it's speculative. And I just, I can't even say anything more about it because this is 15 different stories. You can read like one a day and it's great. I highly recommend it and I can't wait to pick up the Dandelion Dynasty. Question eight is going to be Investiture, a book with the coolest magic system. If you didn't already know, in the Cosmere, invested individuals are the ones who have the capability to do whatever magic is available in that system. So the magic systems are all different forms of investiture. So Allomancy and Mistborn, or the Biochromatic Breath and Warbreaker, or Surge Binding in the Stormlight Archive, you know, they're all different forms of investiture. And I'll talk about those more in depth when I do my Cosmere videos later on. My go-to answer is the Wheel of Time series because I really like this magic system for some reason. It's not as logical as the ones that I tend to like, but I think it's because the ones that I tend to like are Sanderson and they're very logical. But I still think it's really good and it's also partially because I love Aes Sedai and the White Tower. But I also think that the Tensorit novella series has a lot of potential with the slack because it was really interesting and kind of reminded me of the skill from the Realm of the Elderlings a little bit. I've only read the first installment, The Black Tides of Heaven, but I'm very excited to continue on with this. It is silk punk, so it's like Asian-inspired steampunk. And I hope that the slack is something that's explored a little bit more fully in later volumes. And question nine is Shadesmar, or The Cognitive Realm, a book with alternate realms. This is because the Cosmere is split into three different realms across all of the worlds. There's going to be the physical realm, the cognitive realm, and the spiritual realm. The spiritual realm, I'm like, I don't know a ton about, and I think nobody really does at this point in the Cosmere universe. The cognitive realm is this other plane, which is what Shadesmar is in the Stormlight Archive. So the rules that the world or the realm abides by are different in these realms. And you can go between realms, or to some degree, you can go between the physical realm and the cognitive realm. I'm not gonna go into that. I will talk about world hopping later. <laughs> anyway, the question was a book with alternate realm. 
The easiest answer was the Wayward Children series because there are different worlds. This is a portal fantasy. So the kids, as they go through their doorway, are going into a different world, like in every single door. I'm also in the middle of a book, though, that seems to contain multiple realms, or there will have been history surrounding multiple realms, and that's Sephiroth's Hand, which is the first book in the A Pattern of Shadow and Light series. This one also has a very interesting magic system that involves patterns and strands kind of coming together, and like strands being worked and everything being made of patterns. And I feel like it's not covering it as much as I want it to right now, because that is the part of the story that I am most invested in. I'm kind of iffy on the characters and some of the plot. But this story is kind of premised on a person having made an entire other realm out of the essence of the realm that everyone's in, and that's kind of like breaking the laws of nature, essentially. Which is very interesting, and I'm curious about how this multi-realm thing is going to go. And question 10 is going to be, who do you tag? There's Anita Lind, Books and Bobs, Book Your Imagination, Captured in Words, Connor O'Brien, Hardback Haven, I Should Read That, James Chatham, Kitty G, Let's Read, Literary Lizzie, and The September Issue. So those are the people that I'm going to be tagging. Feel free to do this if you want, even if you haven't been tagged, that would also be cool. I really just kind of want to like share the Cosmere love and also help people who like the Cosmere maybe connect with other books that contain similar elements that they might like. Anyway, that is going to be it for this video. Comment down below and let me know what your favorite work in the Cosmere is. My favorite Cosmere work that has been published so far has been Words of Radiance, the second book in the Stormlight Archive, because that was just phenomenal. Thank you for watching, hope you have a good day, and until next time.